Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over extreme gradient boosting techniques in regression or XG boost regression. This is slightly different from what I did earlier for XG boost classification. So if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you do that real quick because it's very similar to what I'm doing right now and these principles build on each other. So let us start understanding how we can actually build an XG boost regression tree in its most simplest form. First thing that you want to do is to initialize your prediction and your prediction in this case will be starting at 0.5. This is true for both regression and classification regression trees. So why would we even need the initial prediction in the first place? Well, first off, you would use this prediction in order to calculate the residuals. You would get the incoming observations, subtract the Y values, incoming observation from your initial prediction and that will be your residual and then once you have calculated all of your residuals with all of your incoming data to train up your given tree you would then calculate a similarity score which the equation is up on this screen and there's one thing to note the lambda term here is a regularization term and this is actually used to help prune the tree and so once you have calculated your similarity score for your root uh, you then try to determine how to branch or create your branches within your tree and you do this by determining thresholds you can think of the threshold as a determinant to split observations to either the left node or the right node the threshold is calculated by obtaining the averages between closest points. The algorithm decides how it will split observations into different groups. It takes the average between two observations, so let's say n and n plus 1, which are closest to the y-axis, and uses the average between n and n plus 1 as the initial split. It's taking the average of its dependent variable here. This effect shifts to the next two observations, n plus 1 and n plus 2, and it continues on to n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 3, n plus 4, so on and so forth until all the available thresholds have been calculated. Then, the algorithm separates the observations that fall less than or greater than the average. It recalculates the similarity score for the left and right node after it stores its given observations in those nodes. It then calculates the gain value. The gain value is defined as a left node plus right node minus root node similarity score. You can calculate the gain value for all available thresholds and a threshold with the highest gain value is kept and its associated branches are used to build the tree. Thus, you created the very first level of your tree. You repeat this process until you don't have any other observations to split or the max number of levels within your tree has been reached. In many R and Python packages, the max level is six. So if your tree is continuously splitting and it reaches that maximum number, it will then stop splitting and just deal with that particular tree and move on. So once we actually created our tree, how exactly would we prune that given regression tree? For each of the thresholds, if gain minus gamma is less than zero, you would remove that branch. So the gamma term here is a hyperparameter and you can iteratively figure out which term is best used given your particular data set. Note that you can also prune the root as well. And if the root is removed, the default or previous prediction will be used. So since we are just starting to build and prune the tree, the default value will be 0.5 if we were to remove the root. Also note that if gain minus gamma is greater than zero in a branch, and if gain minus gamma is less than zero at the root, you would still keep the existing structure. You start pruning from the bottom of the tree and work your way up. Also note that even if the gamma term were to be left at zero, the entire regression tree is still pruning itself if the gain value is less than zero. And the last thing after you have already created your tree and pruned your tree is to calculate your output value. The output value is denoted as that and you would use this output value to help create your prediction values based on your testing or in this case your validation set and this regularization term right at the denominator is used to essentially shrink the similarity score and if you think about it once you have a smaller similarity score you can have, therefore have a lower gain value and this helps determine whether or not to keep that given branch so this regularization term is really useful when it comes to being a more 
conservative or having a more conservative tree when it comes to calculating your predictions. And so when it comes to creating your predictions, you'll first calculate your prediction value for each of your observations and judge how close the predictions are to the initial prediction. And so hopefully this new residual is shrinking toward the initial prediction, thereby having a more accurate model. The prediction or the residuals, the new residuals in this case, is calculated as the initial prediction plus the learning rate, otherwise known as eta, and you multiply this by the output value, as I mentioned earlier. These predictions are used in the next process of the tree. So based on the newest residuals you have calculated from the prediction value, you then build another tree. You repeat the same old process for this new tree, and you repeat this process for n number of trees or until the residuals are minimized and so close to zero that there is minimal improvement. Okay, so this is gonna be my demonstration on XGBoost. So over here, just remove everything, clear out all your global variables and all your hidden variables, load in your libraries, carrot and XGBoost, set your seed to whatever you would want for a reproducible code. And this is the column names, which I am going to be using to name my specific data set. I'm reading in my data set from this URL, and that's the communities data. The data looks something like this, it's coming from this repository. Very interesting stuff. There's 128 uh, features, I think you have right here. And it's about close to 2000 observations, 1993 observations. And I am trying to predict the violent crimes per population uh, numeric variable. You have all these other variables that are numeric and some of them are strings, but I will cast them on over or essentially just remove them. Uh, so anyways, I read in the data and I changed the names of those column names over here. And as we can see, some of the data has these question marks uh, and that is, that is totally fine. We're gonna be removing our community name um, just for uh, all intents and practices purposes uh, because when we're actually predicting, um, it might actually have like a, actually no, it really doesn't matter, uh, but I'll just be removing that uh, since I don't want to go ahead and you know one hot code, one hot encode the variables we have over there. But anyways, Let's do a summary of the data. Oh, as you can see here, there's really no NAs. And I was checking through, there weren't that many NAs until I was trying to convert or cast my data. Oh, I just removed my community names here, but it's actually cast my data to as a numeric. And then if you do this summary of your data again, we can have some NAs here. But the great thing about XGBoost or any type of regression type tree or trees in general, random forest, add a boost, you name it, is that it can handle NAs. So I will largely leave those NAs in the data set. We don't need to do any imputations there. Over here, doing the typical training testing, I did the 80-20 split there. And so this is where we're getting into the grid side. And as you saw in my uh, classification video, uh, I go into more depth and these are pretty much the exact same observations or features or tuning features that I've used. But high level overview, these are a number of trees. Uh, this is the size of the tree, the, the height, if you want to call it that. Eta is a learning rate. And of course, you can, you know, uh, parameterize that as well as see which ones work best. And then you can go to an exact point based on your data set. Gamma, I left it at zero. You don't need a prune, but it's technically already pruning if the gamma term is at zero. Uh, if your gain value is less than zero. And then these are just featuring our uh, sampling weights, you know, subsampling, and then minimum child weights. And then, you know, essentially the larger it is, the more conservative the model will be. And you can ch check that up on the documentation. There's a lot of other features you could potentially use for XGBoost. Uh, number of rounds, watch list, save period, save name. Uh, yeah, under the parameters, yeah, right here. Max depth, min, child weight, so on and so forth. And you can read further on that. It does have the documentation associated with that number of parallel trees, so on and so forth. So I stuck with the, let me load that and then load that. So run that, grid tune, train control, you know, cross validation, uh, three folds, and then allow parallelization in order for this to run really, really fast or just use all of my available cores on my machine. Train data, uh, negative one, two, seven. This is the, essentially gain the first 126 features and then the y variable that's just my dependent variable which is in this case let me do like uh i think it's like string yeah let me just do string see if that happens over here and oh it's already truncated um i can just do a tail 
tail of that. And then, yeah, this is what it's going to be predicting. So these values, if we do like a real quick hist of train data, train data, or just do data, data in general, and that's fine. Do that. And then this is what the data set looks like. And as we see here, this is just like a right skew distribution. It doesn't really affect us too much, but it is heavily weighted or more so weighted toward anything that's less than 0.5. So that's just like a heads up on that. But nonetheless, we will be using, um, we'll just be training on this particular feature. And let's actually run the training sets here. We're just passing in our train control, tune grid, our grid tune over here, and method is xdb true, and then just print out the training output, which we see over down here. This will take less than 15 seconds. Uh, so let's let that run. And then storing everything to an XGB tune, and we can just print that out. And these are our results. So it knows that this is a regression type tree um, because we are having these statistics. We got RMSE, R squared, MAE. And just judging by these values, the R squared value, 0 0.6, it's horrible. Um, <laughs> in general, you want this to be at least 0 0.7, but of course, we weren't really, you know, hyper parameterizing our grid tune you know, so much so that it will take weeks, maybe even, you know, days or maybe even weeks in order for this to actually run successfully. And of course, more data uh, would definitely cause this to run a little bit longer. And so, so we can see here, number of rounds, these are number of trees, and then these are the depth associated with each of those trees. So, you know, in you know hindsight, it's okay, 0 0.6 with what we have. And XG Boost is an incredibly powerful algorithm to actually use here. So let's use this XGB tune. XGB tune by itself, if you want to predict it, gets the most most accurate tree. So in this case, if we do XGB tune, and then there should be like a best tune over here. Best tune, yeah, no, it's 500. Four, so that's 500, four, so it'd be this one. This is the best tune right here. It'll use this particular tree in order for your prediction functions to work. It'll use that particular tree to get your prediction output. So let's use that prediction. And then these are the various statistics, uh, statistical output that you would use to evaluate your regression model. So we have mean squared error, mean absolute error, and root mean squared error. And I already know that carrot array had a few of these functions involved, so I just went ahead and used the default functions. It's the exact same thing if I were to write it out like I did for mean squared error. Uh, but yeah, this is the values of those specific uh, observations. And so when it comes to communicating with others, uh, it's actually really useful to just use like RMSE or root mean squared error because you are standardizing your variables. In this case, converting a square to a, in this case, just itself. Um, yeah, so when you communicate with a CEO, CFO, CTO, RMSE, makes understanding the data a lot more applicable. So yeah, that is basically my quick demonstration on how to apply XGBoost and understanding what XGBoost is in the regression sense. So if you like what you saw, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button to see more future content similar to the machine learning realm. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.